Hello, everyone, and welcome to Sister Strong podcast and video. We are a podcast and video about possibility. This is our way to share ideas and insights and experiences to help us all stand together for health and happiness. This is a toolkit for all of us to use and to meet some wonderful new women. And today we are so lucky we have Brittany, Corey in the house. Brittany, welcome to the show. Woo, woo. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be on here. Yeah, I'm so glad that uh, we found you straight out of Norway, carrying all those medals all the way back home, getting home by the big deadline. We are just so happy to have you home. Yeah, it's nice to be home too. It's always, it was such a go there for a minute, but it's fine. Well, we're glad you got back in the country. You know, as, as we think about empowering and putting positive into the world of women and of people, I think like Brittany's a great example because as an athlete and especially as an Olympic athlete, you know, you are in the trenches all the time, like making it happen and pulling it out. And so I was wondering if today you would share with us just some things from your journey as an athlete and your journey as a nurse. You know, we could tell the world now you're going into nursing to come and help the virus, which is mm -hmm. really great. Um, not only on the team, but taking it for the team, Brittany, sure. going in there uh, in the trenches. But so let's talk about a few things you've learned along your path to help people when, you know, the times have changed, things are weird, and they're just, they need some inspiration. Yeah, so I mean, everybody has their things that go on and they don't know in, in the midst of chaos, like how do you stay focused and how do you stay mentally strong? As an athlete, that's key. Um, you can be as physically fit as or more so than your competitor, but if your mental game is in the wrong space, if you're, we call it, you know, if you're in the wrong headspace, it's really hard to perform under pressure. And so like for Norway, for example, like we do time trials and I ended up the first run, they take half of your field and they're, they're already slotted. So one through four was for my category. And I ended up time trialing fifth and I was like, man. And so then I went and took a second run and my second run was the second fastest time of the day. But I still had to race from that fifth place spot all the way up to the podium. And so that was, a, that was for me a place where I had to be mentally strong. I wasn't able to allow myself to be defeated before the race even started. So when I was in the start gate, I tried as hard as I could to just stay with a mental, mental, um, mental toughness and an equal playing field. And I was able to race my way up through heats. I did six races or six heats of races and ended up with a bronze finish, which I'm, I'm very proud of. And so, oh, yeah, super yeah. proud. So you came from fifth and you ended up in second, but it took you six, you had to do six races to get there. Mm -hmm. And each one of those races, I had to not only stay upright, but I had to put down a solid time because I'm racing next to somebody. And so there was no room for error, which like we all like that little bit of cushion that, oh, maybe if I if I'm not as fast as I was, I could maybe make it up the next run. But this was like, for me, it was do or die. Like I had to be consistent. I had to be on point. And no matter what happened, I had to stay in that zone of, you know, at the top, I'm going to be the first to the bottom. And, you know, if I hit a little rut, it was, I had to t tense up my core and everything I had to bring the board back underneath me because I wasn't going to allow myself to go down. No, I've really used, you know, yeah, I'm super stubborn. And so I use that stubbornness trait to help keep me upright, which stubbornness can be viewed as a negative. But for me, I was able to harness that trait that I have. And that's what helped keep me upright through all those heats and advance and be able to get the U.S. on a podium for the women. It was awesome. Wow. Okay. So, so saying that back as a non-athlete. So one of, one of the things it sounds like it's your mental headspace mm -hmm. that really determines your physical ability, because if, you're, if your mind's not there first, then the rest won't follow. So I think that's really important for everybody right now that like, you know, we put ourselves on a diet of good, right? Of, of good things, good people, good words, good ideas um, to get our mental headspace in the right place so the rest can follow. And like, for me, it's the people that I have in my life. So before the race, during the practice day, I had fallen twice and I was just, I had a lot of anxiety. And so like, you know, I can cast all my anxieties and fear on the Lord. But like that night I got on my church's website and I just put a little prayer up there. I was like, Hey, I know that, 
you guys will pray for this, but I'm having a lot of anxiety. Would you mind just spending a few minutes and praying for me to have this anxiety gone? And I woke up and I was just feeling so good. And I could, I, yeah, felt I like, like that idea because that was, again, another thing I'd like that you're saying is a specific request. Like everyone says, oh, you know, I want it to be good. Okay. Well, good is pretty blank, right? Mm -hmm. But saying, dear friends, dear God, dear community, dear sisterhood, I'm having something specific, anxiety. Please yeah. help me have faith. Please help me get past this very specific thing, anxiety. So I'm going to call number two, um, really identifying what we need to succeed and making a really specific request. Yeah. I think I like that, like putting a name to what you need instead of like, you there said, you go. I know that. yeah, yeah. That's a good t-shirt, putting a name to what you need. <laughs> there you go. Claim it. Claim it. <laughs> yeah. Hashtag, name to what I need. Claim okay. it. Get it. Okay, good. Name right, it to so, claim it. Boom. There we go. Double hashtags. There you go. Stuff. Double hashtag. Okay. So that's a really good one. So what else have you learned? Because, you know, here you came. I'm not telling the whole story of your double top secret book that is coming out soon. But, you know, I mean, literally you came from a place that you had no idea that you could ever be in a path to be an Olympian. You already have won a silver medal in Pyeongchang. Pyeongchang, my favorite name. <laughs> um, so, like, what else have you learned along this journey, Brittany? You know, I've learned that no matter what circumstance I was faced with during my childhood, my youth, my rebellious teenage years, my young adult adulthood, the things that I went through and was able to overcome throughout my life, it was helping preparing me for the next thing. And I look back now and I have a lot of gratitude for the hard times because they helped shape me into who I am and they helped give me a perseverance and a not going to quit attitude. And I think that helps me a lot in all aspects of my life, you know, on, as an in a nur in nursing school that was you know you have to have that grit to keep going no matter how hard it is and, but you also have to have that support too like having i was able to have a super strong support system that i've built throughout my young adult my young teenage years until now and a lot of people have filled voids that i've had whether it's somebody that i can talk to somebody that motivates me somebody that builds me up somebody that brings me to their level somebody that sees potential in me and wants to help and so you know using all of those past experiences not to dwell on them but to help shape my future it it's just it gives me a really cool perspective and a lot of gratitude for where i did come from and where i am now because i've been able to accomplish a lot of things like becoming an rn being the first person in my family to graduate to um being a, on a on the podium at the paralympics and traveling all over the world to get to represent my country and other amputees and other women and other people people that are in their 30s that think that life is over like I've I've been just given such a great opportunity through my experiences to help others and inspire and I get inspired every day and with the people that I'm around and so it's just a lot of gratitude when I look back for the people that I've had and the I mean the not so good con uh, obstacles and stuff like that they've helped create me who I am today yeah and so like for everyone now you know like I, I just think this time for such a time as this right like who we are is a combination of all the people places and things that we are a part of in this lifetime and that we have the opportunity to serve and to help and you have I just call you out for your ability to be a great speaker to be a great mentor to care about other nurses I know you had those study groups for your other nurses and I think it's a really big deal that um, you know, when our country needs you, not only are you training and paying for your own training, but also you are jumping back into your passion uh, of nursing because you saw how important that was for your own journey. So, you know, they, they talk about, you know, you get molded in the fire. And I think, you know, this quiet time for some of us is really a chance to just say, hey, um, I've got that time. I don't have that excuse. I don't have any time. I have some time to do something really, really, really cool. Mm -hmm. All right. Super cool. Do you have another thing that really you can say to uplift our girls and people listening? I think like for me, like part of my journey is, you know, I'd like I have so many people that have been helpful, but it's just, you know, if you try, if you're constantly trying to bring somebody else up to your level, 
instead of trying to push other people down or push people away, like it just, it can create amazing things. And, you know, I, I just encourage people to, to do that for other people. And just like my story is one of gratitude. I even posted on Instagram today, like in the time that we're living in now, just be thankful for the people that are out there that are making sacrifices to make sure that you can get the necessities that you need. And so, I mean, just, I don't know, and, try, and trying to put yourself in somebody else's shoes. I, I try to do that as well. Like, how would I feel if somebody did this or how, you know, I guess it's just camaraderie and just taking care of each other. You know, that's why we're here. We're, we're social beings. And this time of quarantine is a great, it's a great time for people to call that person that they haven't talked to in years or get to spend time with their kids that they don't get to see all of the time. And so if you're using this time to do good and have fun, there we there go. go. <laughs> you know, I mean, it can be, yeah, it can be a really a great way to make memories. It can be a great way to rekindle friendships. It can be a great way to just be able to, you know, work on things that you, like you said, that you haven't had time to do. Like now is the perfect time to tie up all those loose ends and start the rest of your year and have all of that done. Spring cleaning, get all that done right now. And then right, donate your duds. I mean, we've, we've got a funny way to do that, to donate your duds. Well, I just really appreciate you appreciate you being part of our sisterhood. And then I always ask everybody, if you can only pick one thing that has been like the most important thing to you along your path, or one thing you would like to say to everybody, what would be the one thing? Oh, that's hard. That's hard to just pick one. Um, mine would be to appreciate the people in your life. Yeah. Family by choice, we call it. That's right. I'm glad to call you family, Brittany. You, you too. <laughs> can you tell everybody, please, how to find you and how to get a hold of you, how to follow you? Yeah, so you can follow me on Instagram and Facebook, Brittany Corey. And if you need to get a hold of me, you can re reach out through social media. You can reach out to Betsy Camp Experience. She would get you connected. Or, yeah, if you reach out, I'll, I'll get back to you. Super good. So, you know, we just appreciate that you're part of the solution. And thank you again on behalf of all of us for going back into nursing. And I think as you get in there and you see needs where um, the Camp Experience Sisterhood can support you or anybody in any way, you know, please let us know. Because um, in my three prong, love is the antiviral. The first one is love yourself. The second one is love others and help your community. And the third one is have an attitude of possibility. And that is what this podcast and video series is all about. Thank you for listening to Sister Strong, a podcast and video about possibility. We are part of the Global Sisterhood Podcast Network, which is uplifting ideas and connections for you to live your best life. Please share our helpful messages to others that are looking for ideas, connections for a happy, healthy life. I'm your host, Betsy. We are smoking.